You're live. We're live? Yeah. We live? All right. What is this? Hey, guys. Welcome back to the next edition of... Monday Night Live. Hey. <laughs> Always do that. Mute. I forgot to hear hit mute every time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad to be back with you. We've been watching you guys in the chat. And the poll, let me just say how excited I am to see that Ketivore is winning since that is my jam. So yes. shout out to the Ketivores out there. If you're not already following my channel, what are you doing? And if you don't know what Ketivore is, go follow Nisha Loves It. She's got videos that explain everything. Link in description. Or you can just Google Nisha in beautiful, Perry. simple detail. You too. She's the beautiful part and her explanation is the simple part. Where's everybody watching from? If you're new, type new. Where are you at in the world? What city? What state? What country? <clears throat> Is anybody watching from Antarctica? We never have anybody from Antarctica. They have Wi Fi down there? I mean, I, you know they do. <clears throat> Shout out, by the way, to Watch Autumn Keto, who is now our. Uh, I'm just rubbing you. <laughs> I like Our it. PhD teacher distributor. Uh, so look out for details coming soon on this channel and my channel. And I'm sure we'll post it over on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff too. And probably on drberry.com. Did you know he had a website? He has a website. Drberry.com. He never ever talks about his website. Yeah, it's in the show notes, but I always forget to mention it. Yeah. So he's got a website and that's where you can find links to things and uh shop merchandise very soon dorian says you two are a credit to society thanks for changing my life dorian that's Thank that's you. our job doctor nurse oh yeah we need you know we haven't introduced yourself in a really long yeah, time yeah i'm dr ken berry <laughs> a family physician and this is my lovely wife assistant boss manager and best friend, Nisha loves it. Nisha Salas hyphen Barry, who's a registered nurse. Yep. And our job is to help people achieve their best health. Yeah, we both do this on YouTube and we also share on Instagram. And then um, I do, I'm a health coach too. So I went yep. from registered nurse to health coach. And so I do that on the side. Yep. But mostly we love making YouTube videos for you guys to enjoy and learn for free. Yeah, and we used to take care of people one by one and help them one at a time. And we just decided, you know, we can help more people by doing it this way. And so that's why we do it this way because we can help so many more people. All right. So if you have questions, type them in the comments. We will try to answer as many as possible. It is impossible for us to answer all of them. And if you do have a super chat, just know that depending on how many super chats we get. They do expire. They don't stay on the screen forever. Yeah, we, we try to answer each every, and every single one. one. Yeah. Ken Watts says, Dr. Barry, dang, look at those guns. I've been playing with my chainsaw all day. Yeah, I'm he's, he's swole. swole. I knew you were going to say that. You didn't know nothing. I said it with you, you didn't, didn't know. I? James, look? hey, James. Uh, I am working on my PhD from Barry University. Oh, you know what? Like we need it. That's a good t shirt like idea. That. Watch Autumn Keto if you're watching. Yeah, right I got my PhD from Barry University. Oh, Randy. Watching from my van in California. What do you think of the book? The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz. It's one of the best books in this space. Uh, I, I read it a few years back. I've probably read the book three times. Uh, Nina, who I consider to be a good friend, is, is she also uh, was just e emailing with her. And she said that she's going to turn over the Nutrition Coalition to a kind of a CEO person. And she's going to start doing investigative research and reporting. Again? Yes. Yeah. So you can expect more books from Nina probably in a year or two because she's got to do the research. I think that's what she enjoys most. Is she 100%? Yeah. 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 She was so happy when she told me. Uh, Big Fat Surprise is a large book. Yep. It's very scientific. Uh, is it sitting right behind it's, us? It's somewhere back there. I just saw it because I was looking through. The, I was looking for a book and I saw it the other day. Anyway, yeah. but it is a great resource if you oh, want yeah. to be able to argue with someone who thinks they know everything about. Yeah, yeah. Because she she <laughs> researched everything and she documents everything and there's hundreds of citations in the book. It's well, not argue, book. not argue, debate. Debate. Well, educate. How about that? If you want to educate someone who yes. is currently ineducable, or just talk. Yeah, you can just chat. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary thanks. in Texas. Thanks for the super Thank chat. You. Thank you. Uh, Beck says, I ordered my Nisha shirts. Love you, mean it. Yeah, I have love you, mean it. Coffee mugs and T-shirts. Those of you who follow me have been asking for them for a while. You can find them underneath my YouTube videos. 
Um, what is a blue ring around my brown eyes? I have no idea. Do you know well, what? and some people that can be natural. Uh, there is a, uh, a, a Kaiser Flesher ring, which could mean that you've got copper buildup. It's typically not blue, uh, but just look up uh, copper toxicity images and you can see a picture. And if that looks like your eyes, go see your doctor ASAP. <clears throat> but some people just naturally have a blue ring uh, around their, the brown part of their eye as they get older. Steve uh, says thoughts on Farziga during keto carnivore. Steve, if you're, if you're pretty close to carnivore, you're not going to need the Farziga. It's not going to help you at all. After a few weeks, you can throw it in the garbage. This is Loki, one of our rescue kitties. <clears throat> Luke says, I'm watching while squatting and deadlifting in Plant City, Florida. That's the Home of the Strawberry it. Festival. I've been to that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Uh, any carnivore bodybuilding advice? Uh, eat meat, lift heavy. That's literally it. Uh, that's basically what Arnold Schwarzenegger used to achieve Mr. Olympia status. He would eat pounds of, of ribeye and a and dozen yolks. eggs a day. <laughs> and, of course, steroids. You know, steroids. But other than that, that was that was his diet. Yeah. Um, there's lots of meat heavy, fat heavy bodybuilders out there. Our good friend Robert Sykes, the Keto Savage, creator of Keto Bricks, he actually has a Facebook page dedicated to bodybuilding. Um, so if you go to his channel, which I'm pretty sure is just Keto Savage, there should be links over there and you can ask him a lot of questions. They go live, uh, I think, once a week on their channel too. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think does Plant City have a, a junior college that has a basketball team? I feel like we used to play, them, play them when I was in Florida. Alex, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Got it. But can I add salmon, salami, yes. lunch meats in the mix? Why or why not? Depend. Okay, so beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Ye would send the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. But yeah, if you want to add salmon, sardines, uh, anchovies, uh, herring, mackerel. All, all those are wonderful additions to a proper human diet. Absolutely. Uh, the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs is, is not, not only just those four foods, but it's kind of a mindset reset where you just get over the thoughts like, oh, I've got to have variety. Oh, I've got to have some veg. you got to have some fruits. No. You can eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for 90 days, not starve to death, not be miserable, not be hungry, and uh, improve your health. And then if you want to add salmon and sardines, 100%. And caviar, any fish roe, is also an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. Less, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Vinny Tortorich speaks very highly of you, Dr. Barry. Yeah, I think he's a pretty cool cat, too. <laughs> he is really cool. <laughs> uh, he has a great documentary as well. I saw a few of you talking about fat fiction. Um, yeah. That's that the name of his that is movie, his, right? too, right? Yeah, fat yeah, fiction. Yeah, it's a documentary. Yeah. I think there's two of them now. Is there? Yeah. They're both really good. Marcia says see. our video's blurry. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, it isn't blurry. on my end. Hey, Mommy Does Keto wants to know, what is the desirable fasting insulin number? I watched an interview with Dr. Hyman and Ben Bickman yep. where Hyman says less than four is desirable and minus yeah. 6.2. Nobody knows for sure uh, mm -hmm. because the numbers were set checking the value on metabolically sick people. But somewhere between four or five is very, very good. And so... Uh, under five is really good. Under four is very, very good. And if you're 6.2 right now, you're almost there. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. I finally got the lemon seen out of my straw. <laughs> Lynn, do you feel butter, beef, and bacon and egg is enough to heal excruciating arthritis in the fingers only? And will cheese hurt? Yeah, so there's nothing magic in the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. The magic is all the things you're removing. And if you have severe arthritis, one of the things I would definitely remove, and I'm sorry, I love you, and I love cheese, but you should you should do 90 days without the cheese. Because for many people, the dairy, protein, and cheese, even though it's been manipulated by the microbe, is still inflammatory enough that it can affect their gut, their joints, their skin, uh, or even mentally for some of us. We'll have inflammation of, of various neurons in the brain, and, and that can manifest as depression, anxiety. OCD. So if you have severe arthritis, just do the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Leave the cheese off. Kelton, intermittent fast for 18 hours every day. I'm ketovore and I treat myself to one tablespoon of honey in my coffee a week, usually if I'm breaking my fast. Is this okay, ketovore? I mean, depends on who you ask. Uh, once a week, comes down to. I don't care. Yeah. Everybody can have a 
teaspoon or a tablespoon of honey once a week. I don't think that's a big deal at all. The problem comes when it's a trigger and you go down yes. the hole. It starts yes. bringing back cravings for yeah. certain people. <clears throat> that's just yeah. all it takes to go yeah. back down a bad path. For me, it would be one tablespoon and then two tablespoons. And then I'd be like, well, you know, I'm going to do it on Saturday and Sunday. They're both technically weekends. And then I'd be like, well, Friday's technically the weekend. So I'd be having two tablespoons three days a week. And before you know it, I'd be putting three tablespoons every damn day. I don't think that it's, it's a health food. I it's, think that it is a yeah. treat. It's pure sugar. And uh, just like watch, yeah, watch out. It's you know? pure sugar. But if you love the taste of honey, have a mm. spoonful once a week. Yeah, I don't think it's going to slow you down much. Strangeosity, which is worse, regular soda or diet soda? Regular soda has about 40 carbs. Diet soda has zero carbs. But how many carbs worth of damage would diet soda be yeah. if you had to give it a number? Well, strangeosity, what, what you're implying with your question is that the only bad thing about regular soda is the sugar. And I would strongly disagree with that. I would say that every bad thing in diet soda is also in regular soda, except for the artificial sweetener, uh, which uh, is probably not good for you either. But 40 grams of carbs plus all the other dastardly shit that Coca-Cola and Pepsi put in their, their products, that's pretty bad. Yeah. So I'd much rather you, if you're going to pick one, drink the diet soda in moderation and cut your diet soda half and half with sparkling water like San Pellegrino. It mm. tastes the same. We have a whole video on my channel on how to like get off the diet soda. Yeah, yeah. I, both of us were hooked on diet soda forever, and we used the trick that, that she talks about on her video on her channel to we, get off the diet soda. We talk about it. And we talk about it, yeah. It's both of us. Yeah. Luke said, yeah, Temple Terrace. Has a basketball team. Yeah, that's where I went to school at uh, Florida He's College. At Florida College. He played there too. Yeah, but uh, I thought we used to play at Plant City team. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody says, is cream cheese the same as cheese? Albert, it's got cheese in the name. And cream cheese is cheese. Any kind of cheese is cheese. Yep. Uh, Charles, is it safe to leave cooked meat, bacon, steak, tongue, etc., outside without refrigeration, without spoiling, bone broth? You mean, okay, if it's cooked, for a, For a certain, certain length of time. time. Uh, I'm broth, I wouldn't leave uh, it. Like a steak that we have left over, I have no problem eating it after it's been sitting on the counter for three or four days. Nisha's meter is different from mine. What's your max if, if it's been sitting on the counter after it's cooked? 24 hours? <clears throat> no. 48? Maybe eight. Eight hours, yeah. But I mean, I, if it doesn't stink, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. If I smell it, it's like, oh, damn, that's off. I'll give it to the dog. But if it doesn't smell bad, I'm going to eat it. Toto gets a lot of my leftovers. Yeah. Like today I had chili and I picked the brisket out because right now I don't like the texture of it. And so he got the brisket today. Uh, David, thank you. Can cheese damage LDL? Keto Bandito wants to know. Yeah, I don't care about your LDL at all. I care about the in inflammation that the protein in cheese might cause in some of us. Not all of us, it seems like. But some of us, the protein in cheese can be quite inflammatory. Um, but I don't, uh, you shouldn't care what it does to your LDL. That's irrelevant. Rob, I've lost 22 pounds on ketovore, eating 10 to 20 grams carbs per day. Feeling great. My wife is concerned that I'm missing out on nutrients. Any supplements recommended on ketovore? Ask your wife, respectfully and lovingly, which specific nutrients do you think I'm missing? And if she says vitamin C, then you can explain uh, about carnivores not needing as much vitamin C. Uh, but the only supplements that we care about at all is is iodine minerals that Keto Child Daily Minerals takes care of. Uh, vitamin D3, along with K2 in the winter here in Tennessee. We don't get much sun at all. I was outside all day in my T-shirt, but I, I probably got no sun whatsoever because the sun's too low on the horizon. It's not high enough for me to get the good, good UV radiation. Um, minerals. Iodine, vitamin D, and K2. That's literally it. And I've got videos on vitamin D rich foods and vitamin K2 rich foods. So if you don't want to, and iodine rich foods. So if you don't want to take any supplements, I think that's in completely possible on keto, ketovore, carnivore, whereas it's not possible on a plant based vegan or vegetarian diet. You're going to have to take some supplements because you cannot get enough nutrition on those nutrient depleted diets. But if you'll mind the foods that you eat and make sure you're eating plenty of foods rich in iodine, vitamin D, and vitamin K2, you don't have to supplement anything on a proper human diet. That's that's the part. That's how you know it's the proper human diet is you literally don't have to take a single supplement. T 
Christina, thank you. Uh, Karen says, does desiccated thyroid supplement heal Hashimoto's? No, it treats Hashimoto's uh, symptoms and, try and attempts to regulate your thyroid function and yeah. hormone function and all of that stuff. But it can't really heal if you're continuing to do things that are causing your Hashimoto's. I have Hashimoto's to be uh, inflamed and active and you have all the bad signs and symptoms. You really need to heal your gut, which is where everything kind of begins with Hashimoto's and, and most things, honestly. Yep. yep. <clears throat> and that's what I recommend doing meat based ketovore and carnivore to as, as an elimination diet, which many people say do an elimination diet, but they don't recommend carnivore. So you can find out exactly how and when and where these certain foods affect you when you bring them back into your way. Yep. I've got two over here. Carolyn says, do we need electrolytes on keto or carnivore? You need electrolytes and minerals on every single diet that you eat on the planet. Regardless of what diet you're eating, you've got to make sure you're getting enough electrolytes and minerals. And you can do that with a proper human diet, with keto carnivore, if you go out of your way to eat the foods that are rich in those things. Or you could eat the foods you really like on keto, ketovore, carnivore, and use keto chow's daily mineral drops, and then you know you're getting your iodine and your electrolytes and your minerals. That's, that's kind of why we came up with that product is so that you could not have to just eat every meal with 100% focus on, am I getting enough magnesium, potassium, uh, iodine, manganese, cobalt, molybdenum? You don't have to do that if you just take a serving of the daily minerals every day. But I'd rather, 100% rather, you never buy this and just eat the foods that have the nutrients. You just need to hold it up instead of poking me in the eye every time. Like Nobody can even see Ooh. what that is. Anyway. I can't see that. Oh, and there was one more. Let's Ant see. No. Okay. Antonin, uh, shout out to my wife, Janelle, who has lost 150 pounds. Janelle. Is that right? Janelle? 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 Janelle. Boo. Yeah. Everybody hit the thumbs up for Janelle. That's freaking awesome. Thanks for a life change. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I hope she's got some before and after pictures posted somewhere, Antonin. I hope you bought her several delicious I, steak dinners. I hope you buy her whatever she wants. <laughs> That's awesome. Karen says, are the benefits of raw goat's milk kefir good on carnivore diet? Kefir's tasty and uh, raw goat's milk homemade kefir is less bad than store-bought kefir. I'm still not convinced that there's any benefits from drinking uh, even raw milk kefir over just eating a proper human diet. I love it, though. I like it. Chris, who does AC and things, says severe IR and issues from Lyme's disease now need to lose at least 50 pounds. Doctors say low carb, high fat is nonsense. Yeah. Would you recommend keto or carnivore to help me? Well, it depends. If you like some veg in your diet, eat keto. If you're happy eating meat and eggs, just go carnivore. And then when you've gotten rid of the 50 pounds and your, your, your insulin resistance and all your other problems are in remission, you can go back and tell your doctor, who's full of nonsense how about that yeah. <laughs> podunk pretty is quilting says nisha looks like she is having a girl today if you didn't know i'm pregnant nisha is pregnant pregnant art i knew you'd see i'm pregnant we don't know if it's a girl we don't know i thought you were gonna say we don't know how that happened well we know how it happened so, yeah, Everybody there's that. that Royal, gosh, hey, Dr. Barry, just dropping by. I love all your content. Ketobore over here. I crave carbs sometimes, but Same. I know now that I'm not consuming enough healthy fats. Keep up the great work. Love you and Nurse Nation. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. You got something over there you're wanting uh, to Somebody's about. asking about diverticulosis. I've got a... A, uh, a video on this YouTube channel about diverticulosis. Thank you, Mitzi Champion, uh, one of our moderators, for pointing that out. We've got the, the best moderators in the world. A lot of times, if they see just an obvious beginner question, they'll answer you in the comments. So be watching the comments. You might get your question answered. They have a though. wrench beside their name. Their name is Blue. That's how you know who yeah. they are. Uh, M. Holland, hypo Hashi patient, TSH 7.7. .7. Is there a way to not be on thyroid meds and take vitamins to stabilize it? 
I've been keto for for three years and I'm scared. No, no. First of all, don't think of your thyroid replacement hormone as, as a medicine. It's not. It's a, re a hormone replacement, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, I am not on medications, but that's because mine was caught fairly early. Most people go undiagnosed from Hashimoto's for so long that by the time they are diagnosed, they are just their thyroid is in distress. So you may be able to lower it. Uh, but if you don't get off of it, that's fine. It's not like that's the end all be off. You're not off meds. You didn't yeah. succeed. Like, don't feel that way. Yeah. because that's If your thyroid is completely destroyed, you're going to have to have thyroid replacement hormone. Yeah. That's not a defeat. That's not a... A, a, a minus one on your part. That's normal. That's okay. Just like women who have their ovaries taken out, they don't make progesterone and estrogen anymore. They got to have that replaced if they want to feel like they want to feel. Um, also, when it comes to ketovore, you've done it three years and your TSH is 7.7. It's too high. That's too high. And also, I'm not sure, but I, I would hope that your physician or provider is checking your labs often. Uh, and isn't happy with that number either, and maybe yep. is changing your medication dosage. Yeah, yeah. hopefully increasing your dosage because right. that's too high. Absolutely. And Jen, it, go you ahead, said Betty. thyroid meds. Uh, are, if you are on Synthroid, maybe talk to your provider about being on a desiccated thyroid medication, Nature Throid, uh, MP, what's the other, Erfer? What, what is it? What's the one in Canada? Oh, Erfa, E R F A, Erfa, yeah. Yep. Uh, Jennifer says, how would you recommend weaning off Nexium? So if any of you guys are taking Nexium, Prevacid, Lavolo, um, what's the other one, Prilosec, Omeprazole, any of those acid blockers, and you've been taking them for a long time, the first step is to start eating a proper human diet. That's going to get rid of the inflammation. It's going to calm down your gut. Then instead of taking your Nexium or your Prevacid every day, you're going to start taking it every other day. Do that for a month. Let your stomach get used to that. Then start taking it every third day. Let your stomach get used to that. And then you can probably stop it. But if you stop pre Prevacid, Nexium, Prilosec, cold turkey, you can have what's called a rebound reflux that's really severe. It's not dangerous, but it hurts like a mofo. So wean that medicine down slowly and obviously check with your doctor. Rosie says that she will be at the Willis event in February at the SEO compound. Sweet. Do you know what day that is? You I haven't don't, told me. I don't know. I've been invited. Amanda, if you're watching, send me details. Yeah, message Nisha. Yeah, all you guys, message her if you've got like dates and stuff because I, <clears throat> I suck at that. Cat and mouse. What, if any, nonstick pans do you recommend and use for things like eggs? So we use green pan, which is ceramic. Yep. Um, I get questions sometimes like, I can't believe that you're using nonstick pans. Teflon is not healthy. Like that's the, not the only yep. nonstick pans out there. So we use ceramic. Uh, you can find those at Bed Bath & Beyond, Williams-Sonoma, uh, greenpan.com. I think they have their own website. You can read up on it. It's just ceramic. And that's what we've been using for two it, three years now. It works great. Yeah. Uh, and you know the old Teflon pads, if you looked at them funny, it would scratch. Right? These do not do that at all. I wouldn't all. put them in the dishwasher. Though. Yeah, don't wash them by hand and don't use metal spatulas on there. But uh, we love them, and they do great. Also, we use the silicone baking things that are kind of floppy. I cleared that with Dr. Anthony J., Ph.D. researcher who wrote the book Extra Generation. He said that silicone's okay. He did. Yes. Uh, France, Francis James wants the link to the ice maker. That you got. Oh, uh, I will have to link that on Instagram or my blog. Okay. So um, be watching Nisha's Instagram. Oh, Antonin said... We watch you guys religiously. Thank you for all the info. She works hard to keep me on track. I'm very lucky. excellent. Good excellent, team. Excellent. Excellent. It's always better when you work as a team. It is. Do you got something over there? Because I got plenty over here. Mark Lance says, how long ago were you in Europe doing a live in a little backyard garden? That was in the UK. That was in London. Oh, I forgot you know we did yeah. that. I actually got up early. She was still asleep. I was asleep yeah. If you look closely, you can see my eyes are still swollen. And I'm like, got we were that, I've got my, got my morning voice. And I'm out in the garden, so I don't wake her up making a video. I woke but up and I woke up the window. That was the coolest little the Airbnb. Back. The story about getting into that place oh was the best. God. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. That was Three, six years ago. Oh, was it? I, crazy? I'm terrible with time. That was like what did I say earlier? Ago. Dates and time? Ask her. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was about six years ago. I think. Well, but at least five. At least five. Salt is life. Yes, Boink 800. Salt is life. 
You won't have life very long without salt. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys saw my latest YouTube video, but the way you know that the diet that you're eating is the proper human diet and does have therapeutic effects is when big pharma starts trying to come up with a pill that mimics the keto diet and that mimics intermittent, intermittent fasting. And there are, there's actually several pharmaceutical companies trying to come up with a keto mimicking pill. And they're, they're studying one for cancer treatment because cancer loves sugar and keto is very, very low in sugar. Cancer hates it when you eat keto. And so they're, they're, researching this keto mimicking inter intermittent fasting mimicking pill for cancer. But the researchers reported that it also seems to help people lose weight and helps with their insulin resistance. They were blown away that, that this keto mimicking intermittent fasting mimicking pill helps people lose weight. So you can wait till they get that pill FDA approved in another three or four years and probably pay them a thousand bucks a month for the pill or you can just start eating keto now and intermittent fasting every day and get all the benefits for F-R-E-E. -E. That spells free. Hey, Trucking with Diabetes. Thank you. Welcome back. Albert, maybe this summer somebody will get a Michigan event together. We will come to Michigan, but we ain't coming in January or February to Michigan, I can just tell you. Will you stop copying me? Like, this is, what, the fourth week in a row we've matched? I, Navy, Navy. I am making a statement about the way I eat. Matching me. Hey, if you've been watching us for since the beginning, like since the beginning on Facebook, before we're even doing YouTube lives, put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Who remembers the, uh, the movie theater parking lot video? I know there's some of you. Yeah. <laughs> Christine, my doc is sending me for a lipid test in A1C, only 20 days into keto and fasting training. My doctor hates keto. I don't expect miracles from keto yet, but will keto through my labs make them wonky until I've been doing it longer? Well, she's been doing it 20 days. If it's going to, your A1C is going to be down at least a few tenths of a point. If you've been doing true keto, um, your triglycerides are going to have gone down. Your HDL will have gone up a little bit. Uh, your LDL and total cholesterol may have went up, they may have went down, or they may have stayed the same. It's about a third of people do each thing. And so there's no way to know what your LDL has done. But if you're truly eating low, low carb keto, your triglycerides and your A1C will both be down already, at least a little bit. Yes, I was blonde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had didn't you have blue well, hair no, I was, for a minute? Well, I had blue hair for a minute. It was gray, technically. It was silver. I had silver hair. <sighs> Damaging. Yeah. Then I had teal hair, like mermaid hair for a while. It's been a wild ride for the hair. Okay? I, love it. I love it. I love it. Wayne Nets is a four year follower. Oh man. Four years. Thank you so much. Oh geez, for out here. Sticking I love with it. us. Mr. Edmond, thank you, Doc. Most keto guys are saying grass-fed only and limited protein, leaving me afraid to just eat. I'm glad you make things so simple. We have had a discussion today over on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, at Nisha Loves It, about um, making people feel like uh, they're not doing it right if they can't afford the grass-fed, grass-finished, organic panda massage meats and i uh, had a lot of people say thank you for yep. you and dr barry saying yep. that you know you can still see health benefits you can do what you can afford it's still you're still going to see health benefits mm -hmm, and i'm not going to guilt somebody and say you're not doing it right right 100%. meat is expensive right yeah. now like so beef? let's be very clear grass-fed grass-finished uh meat is three to six percent better when it comes to omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. It is better, no doubt. It's three to six percent better, but it's cost anywhere from double to triple. So does that sound like an economically feasible, smart thing to do if you're on a limited budget? Now, if you're, you know, rich as four foot up a bull's, mm, that's what my grandfather used to say, then yeah, get grass-fed, grass-finished panda massage every single meal. But if you're on a budget like we were forever, we still get our meat from Walmart and Sam's Club and Kroger. The, where else do we get meat from? Now, we're well, going to go to Nashville, and we're going to go to the Bare Bones Butcher, and we're going to get some good quality meat. Okay. But that happens once a month or once every two months. 
You're like totally leaving out a huge part. Of okay, go. We bought a cow. We also bought a cow. I forgot about the cow. It's in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a huge cow. Our freezer is entirely full of a local cow. Ah. Uh, Sacred Cow. If you haven't read that book, I thought it's here somewhere. If yeah, you Sacred read that Cow's book, a great book. Uh, it's on Amazon. You can There's download an it. Yeah. There's an uh, audible. Highly recommend that book. And it kind of goes into the, how there's really not that big of a difference. Yep. Don't feel bad. I got two over here. Jim Davis says, anyone know what nutrition in okra? Because I love it. I also love okra. Uh, it's fairly low carb. You This summer, you should do a recipe where you bread it with pork tank. I have a recipe uh, linked on my Christmas menu video. There's a keto breading there you go. over there. It's not yeah. my recipe. It's someone else's. So but. for most of the time for okra, it's the breading that kills you. Right. But if you could have a keto or even you can use Parmesan cheese and pork panko and have a carnivore coating on your okra, it's going to be way, way low carb. OK. Uh, Ray Lally says Big Pharma has been flooding the airwaves with psoriasis drugs. Will diet help this? 100 percent. Yes, Ray. I have a video on this YouTube channel about just psoriasis. Psoriasis. There is a genetic component. One to five percent is genetics. 80 to 90% of why you have psoriasis, especially why you have severe placking psoriasis, is hyperinsulinemia. And that's what a proper human diet fixes. Once you fix the hyperinsulinemia, the, the typical story for somebody with severe psoriasis all over their body is that it all goes away except for one little patch right here or one little patch on their leg. And that's now that is their psoriasis. They can put some steroid on once a week and it's nothing. But then when they go back to eating junk, it all comes back again because it's a sign of poisoning, right? You're eating too many carbs, too many, too many grains, too much sugar, too many vegetable seed oils. Watch my video about psoriasis. And then if you like a little veg in your diet, start watching my Keto 101 playlist. If you're happy with just meat and eggs, watch my Carnivore 101 playlist. And that's it. You're going to go from covered with psoriasis to either having none or having a little patch somewhere that's not a big deal that you can put a Band-Aid on? Uh, I'm going to do a poll, and I want to know um, who out there got off their medications, healed uh, their diabetes or thyroid, anything, really. Reverse any condition and stop meds. Without eating grass-fed, grass-finished panda massage. Good, yes, okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, Friar, Obert, Friar, Friar Roberts, please have a podcast with Dr. Paul Mason. Yeah, I love Paul Mason. Uh, he's on the other side of the earth. And so the only problem, I, we love each other. At least I love him. I hope he loves me. Uh, is the time zone difference. It's hard for us to get a time where we're both awake and not in the clinic, et cetera. But definitely I'll, I'll reach out to Paul. I love him. Danielle says, what minerals for headaches? Magnesium. I've got a, a YouTube video about migraine headaches, maybe more than one, but magnesium is very, very important. But there are several other things that are important as well. Tammy's offer blood pressure medicine. Uh, Vita Maria says, Dr. Barry, have you heard anything about Dr. David Sinclair? Yeah, I've read, I've read everything he's written. Uh, he, he's a very smart fellow. We follow each other on Twitter. Uh, I have not invited him on to the, for a YouTube live yet. Uh, I'm not sure if he could accept because I think he works at Harvard and they've basically been told uh, that I'm persona non grata. They're, they're not to interact with me. Um, there's another, um, Harvard professor who believes 100% in low-carb keto carnivore. Uh, and he said, dude, I love your, what you're doing. Don't ever stop, but I can't be on your YouTube channel or they would literally, I would lose my tenure. I'd be sent home from Harvard. Matia wants to know, uh, or she said you should get Zoe Harcum on the show. Hasn't she love been her. on? No, I don't think I've she had Zoe, it. but I love Zoe. She's awesome. Okay, we'll, yep. we'll work on it. Yep, yep. Uh, James uses 86% less insulin now. So any, any of you guys who are type 1 diabetics or you have LADA, imagine using 86% less insulin on a daily basis. How much money would you save? How many copays would you save over the course of a year? Hot Dog 5 went from an A1C of 6.0 to 5.3 just eating cheap meat 
5.3 is freaking amazing. Oh, thank pole? you. Blessed. Blessed to overcome. No junk, no chemicals, no preservatives, more healthy, and I've built up my immunization through natural um, eating, eating raw foods. Yeah. We love eating raw meat as well. Yep. We haven't made beef tar steak tartare in a we long We need to do that. Yeah, I miss and that. And you don't know how long we've been saying we're going to do that recipe. And you need to do it while you're pregnant. Absolutely. Eat raw meat while you're pregnant. The last time and I not was pregnant, I, I ate raw meat. Oysters at least all the time. once a week. At yep. least once a week. Yep, yep, all the time. Uh, Kim Sutton. Hey, Kim. Reverse diabetes A1C from fourteen point seven eight to six point one. Eating cheap meat. Kim, I love you. Hell Kim. yes. Hell to the yes. Every time she shares her stuff, that I'm is like, awesome. It's, it blows my mind yep. every time. Like I've read that A1C before, but every time I yep. see, it, I'm like. You're not home yet, but I know you can see the, the lights through the now windows. You're getting there. Huge yeah, difference. That's freaking awesome. That's so awesome. We love you. We're so proud of you. Yep, yep. Uh, so far, 91% says no grass-fed but healed, and 9% said all grass-fed. There you so we go. we got a few purists out there, which is fine if you can afford it. We're not saying don't eat it. We're just saying, like, don't guilt people. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Well, first of all, it's not necessary. Anyone can do this on any budget. Hot dogs and mustard, spam, potted meat, deviled ham. You can go to the Dollar bologna, General around here and 100%. get a carton of eggs for a dollar. Yep, and a Are stick of bologna. Are they the best thing ever? No. Are they going to help you get off your medications? Yes. 100%. 100%. Yes, yes, yes. Aww, Just call Thanks, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, Mercury says, can you reverse diverticulosis? So diverticulosis is just the condition of having diverticuli. What you want to do, and so if you just have diverticuli and you never have a, a flare-up of diverticulitis, you never have pain. It never bothers you. Uh, the majority of adults in America, if they had a colonoscopy, they've got at least one diverticuli. And it probably comes from eating all the grains and all the fiber and all the roughage and having to strain when you have bowel movements. That's probably why... Uh, there's such an epidemic of diverticulosis. But you're going to keep the diverticuli. They're going to stay probably, but you're never going to have a flare-up of diverticulitis eating a proper human diet because you're not eating any of the things that cause inflammation in your gut. Make sense? Oh, I had a good one. Here it is. Easy login says, my wife is pregnant. Can she stay carnivore? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Kelly Hogan yes, had yes, yes. three carnivore pregnancies, I think, and yep. did very well. Yep. Uh, all three of her babies are almost grown and they're still eating a lot of meat. Absolutely. They're beautiful. They're beautiful babies. Smart. Yep. Funny. And so is she. If you're not following her, uh, her is uh, My Zero Carb Life. That's her YouTube channel. Dang it. There was a good comment here about eggs. Where the heck did that go? Hey, Granny Berry. Everybody's saying hi, Granny Berry. Granny Berry's watching from Alabama. She's 92 years old. And now Granny Berry eats low carb, but she doesn't eat keto yet. <laughs> she has treats. Yeah, she still has her <laughs> treats, but, but she, she's 90. <laughs> she doesn't have as many treats as she once did. She's she's much more treat free than she used to be. And her last hemoglobin A1C was actually better than my dad's hemoglobin oh, A1C. Yeah. She kicked his butt. And mm. now I would predict he's not going to have that because he's a little bit competitive. Uh, he's going to be eating lower carb now, too, to fix that A1C. Uh, you guys are the best two channels on YouTube. Thank you, oh, Master thank you Plumber. So much. Yeah, Granny is uh, she is down in Alabama and up to no good. That's a hundred percent true. Uh, Stovetop Cookie, is it safe to eat raw chicken? No. Yeah, I wouldn't eat raw chicken. I wouldn't recommend. That. Now, if you slaughter the chicken yourself in the backyard, a hundred percent, you can eat raw chicken. Yes, it's but not tasty. It's yeah, raw like, raw why? steak is delish. <laughs> yeah. If you prepare it properly, uh, raw oysters are delish. Raw salmon, raw, raw tuna. Yep, raw fish is delish. But raw chicken, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I, I just I, don't know why you would want to. Yeah, just cook it a little bit. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Somebody said they could get um, a dozen eggs at the farmer's market for six, seven bucks. And then at, uh, you know, uh, Aldi, they're three bucks. And yeah, so Aldi has really come 100%, out. 100% buy the cheap eggs if that's all you can afford. That is not going to hurt you. pastured. Listen, by the way, when you're buying expensive eggs, make sure they're pastured. Cage-free doesn't mean anything. Even free-range doesn't mean anything at this point. But Because uh, I think it's like they have 
30 feet or something of sunshine uh, and that's considered free range. There's no, there's an open door. Yeah. And so the chickens never go outside. They're afraid to. You want pasture. Yeah, you want pasture. So just so you know. Preferably up the road. You can cut. Eventually, you can come buy eggs from us. 100%. We're working on Mickey it. Mickey Powell, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mal Aldi has many ice makers right now. Really? Here's a great comment. Uh, any of you guys who have PTSD, depression, anxiety, OCD, Four Green Frog says, my PTSD and depression are great now since eating carnivore for three and a half years. So many people don't need their anxiety medicine, their depression medicine, OCD, PTSD, they they just get better. They get to the point where you still have them, but they don't consume your life like they once did when you're eating a proper human diet. I'm still hydrating. I've been out with my chainsaw all day in the woods, all day, right? How many hours was I out there? All day. Yeah. Uh, Jill, can you talk about caffeine intolerance? I know you mentioned that you are Dr. Barry and I am too. Can you detox the liver to fix this? You know, either you're, I don't think this is a, a, a liver toxicity issue. Uh, I think it's a genetic issue. Some people just can't tolerate caffeine. Some people, it doesn't bother them at all. This little winch <laughs> can drink a two liter uh, unsweet tea and literally at bedtime and go to bed. Be fine. And if I have unsweet tea af after 2 p.m., I'm not going to sleep. And that's just the difference in our, our genetics, the way we, we metabolize the caffeine. It's not a liver toxicity issue. Nick says three weeks on. No, no, that's not the one. Terry says, do I need a pre a prebiotic or a probiotic on the better, the triple B and E diet? So triple B and E is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And no, I don't take one. Do you take a prebiotic or probiotic? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is when you're eating a proper human diet, the, your gut bacteria are, are going to normalize. The good bacteria are going to upregulate. The bad bacteria are going to downregulate naturally, almost like your gut was designed to eat a certain diet. And when you eat that diet, all the gut bacteria and all the gut, uh, your, your epithelial cells, they all just get better and they just go right to where they should be. It's almost like magic, but it's not magic. It's physiology. Billy Barnes. Thanks very much. Thanks, Billy. The bearded dad, upper right quadrant pain, test done, lower, upper and lower scope, gallbladder removed, and had imaging. The doctor said it hasn't killed you yet, just live with it. Uh, it may be digestive, veggies make it worse. Well, carnivore, help. yeah, veggies make it worse. And I'd, I'd 100% eat a carnivore diet, meat and eggs, and uh, maybe get a second opinion if, if the pain's pretty severe. Uh, there are multiple things that can cause right upper quadrant pain. Obviously, your doctor knee jerked and took out your gallbladder, which is a typical dumbass knee jerk maneuver of the average doctor. But if you're still having the pain and your gallbladder is in the dumpster, obviously it wasn't your gallbladder, so it must be something else. So I would get a second opinion and I would immediately start eating meat and eggs. Uh, LaShawn says, what can you do when you have meat aversions but don't want to go back to veggies? Eat, eat seafood, eat eggs, eat oysters, shellfish, um, I would crustaceans. say a lot of the time it's the meat aversion is to like simple meats. So you don't really want a burger and you don't really want a steak, but you don't really want a grilled chicken breast. But if you make maybe a meat loaf or meat balls or sausage balls or something like that where it's more flavor and it less looking like a piece of meat, that helped me. Also, if, if you're pregnant and have made aversions, I have a whole video about that. So, Where's the link for the shirt? Somebody was it's asking. It's not available yet, but it is a, it's shop it's it's a Shopify store. Yeah, it's um, coming. So yeah. Stephanie Anderson weaned herself off Prozac after 20 years and off Prilosec after 10 years thanks to keto. Mm. Guys, you think I'm joking? Ask Stephanie. She ain't joking. This People are doing this every single day. The vast majority of these chronic medications for these chronic medical conditions are unnecessary when you stop poisoning your body and stop inflaming your body. That's literally all you have to do. Then your body, guess what it does? It heals. It's almost as if it were meant to be healthy and healed. 
But did you, you got to stop the poison. Did you answer Christine's already? I did not. Okay. Christine says, electrolytes confuse me. I heard we are not supposed to supplement potassium. Can I take keto chow um, electrolytes daily? How do I know how much I need? So. Hey, man. Is this? Yeah. On the back of a keto chow bottle. It will all tell keto you, chow products. It will tell you how much to take. Does that mean you have to stick to that? No, that no. is the recommended daily dose. And you're never going to take too much if you stick to that. We drink way more than that. Way more. Yeah. Um, so there's the how much should you take? Yeah. And then, uh, yes, you can you can take keto chow's electrolyte drops. You can use Redmond's Relight powders every single day. Absolutely. This is the stuff that Nisha loves. Is that mango? This one's pina colada. Pina colada, yeah. Which yeah. you can make in the summer into a real pina colada if yeah. you so choose. And that's what I've got in my water because I've been outside sweating all day. And so people think that rehydrating means drinking water. You're not hydrating unless you've got salt or electrolytes in your water. You've got to have the electrolytes and the salt in order to rehydrate thoroughly and properly. Links and discount codes are in the description, I think, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So if you want to get a discount... That's where you'll find that information. Absolutely. Philo says, do you have to eat the oils in canned cod liver oil to get the vitamin D? No, you do not. The cod liver itself has vitamin D. It also has vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K2. And uh, the oil in every cod liver oil that I've ever seen is not cod liver oil. It's cod oil. So it's just fish oil that's, that's covering the cod liver. And so it's a great source of omega-3 and it probably has vitamins and minerals, but you don't have to. I usually pour the oil off because it's kind of fishy, oily, gross. I don't like it, but I love the coffee. <clears throat> Martha, can kids do keto? What should one be on the lookout with them? I have a six and an eight-year-old, two boys. You literally don't have to be on the lookout for anything. Give them all the meat and eggs they want. Give them a few berries, a few nuts, a little bit of veg. That is the perfect diet for a growing child. Now, if you're going to feed them the standard American shit diet, you've got to be on your toes and watch out for all kinds of stuff. Which nobody is, by the way. I, say, I mean, most most parents are just going about their day with right. chicken nuggets. and Yeah, it's like, here's the toaster strudel whatever. for breakfast. And I'm not knocking that. Listen, I, I, grew, am. I grew up on that. If you don't know better, then you don't know better. But like nobody's worried about that most of the time. Like my mom wasn't like, should I be feeding her chicken nuggets? Like yep. she was like, here, are chicken nuggets. Right, <laughs> like right, nobody's right. worried about it. Yep. The minute you label something yep. a diet, it yep. becomes this big deal. Yep. But that's why we try not to call it a diet. Really, when we talk about Beckett, we just say he eats food. He eats real food. Yeah, he eats real food, and that's what children are supposed to do. Back when I was growing up, I would eat. I would sneak and eat four toaster strudels for breakfast. Do you think I was getting all my vitamins and minerals and electrolytes and, and essential fatty acids and amino acids? Hell no. Not even close. Did anybody know or care? No. But I didn't die. So when you start feeding your children a, a keto, ketovore, carnivore, proper human diet spectrum, even low carb with real whole foods, they're going to be getting more vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids than literally 99% of their peers the same age. So just feeding them a real diet is a win. Nick says, I made your meatloaf recipe last week. It's absolutely amazing. It's a gem. It's great, right? Thanks, Nick. Freaking if you awesome. didn't know, I have a pretty good meatloaf recipe. And in fact, I just did a whole entire video on my top 10 ways to eat and cook ground beef with recipes linked in the description over on my channel. Yep. And it features my recipes and some of my friends' recipes, but meatloaf is one of the main ones that I'm like, it's good stuff. Absolutely. Terry, my 15-year-old daughter had a positive ANA and positive chromatin AB. Thyroid numbers keep going back and forth between normal and abnormal. Are you going to listen? Sorry, I was doing something. My 15-year-old daughter had positive <laughs> ANA and positive chromatin AB. Uh, thyroid numbers keep going back and for between abnormal and normal, so on. Okay, so is, is your daughter eating a proper human diet? If no, then start that immediately. OK, uh, secondly, keep following up the doctor until you've got a firm diagnosis, because these two being positive, there's there's several autoimmune conditions that can cause that and several uh, genetic things that, that even could cause that. You got to keep doing your medical investigation, but she 100 percent needs to be eating 
real human food, Terry. Can dogs have keto chow daily mineral drops? Oh yeah, every day when I make dog as food, my our our guardian dog, Great Pyrenees, I'll put 15 drops of the daily minerals in his his food and mix it up and also put some red and salt. Your dogs and cats need salt. They need minerals. And if it's in the food, great. But if it's not in the food, they're basically a, they're a prisoner in your house. How are they going to get it if you don't think to give it to them? And so many people say, oh, I love my dog so much. And then they feed their dog a particular type of kibble. The reason being is it makes their poop easier to pick up. That They have never once said, I wonder if this kibble is a good source of nutrition for my dog that I allegedly love so much. If you, I'd be no, like saying, saying that. I'd be I've like, never heard anyone say Oh my that. God, yeah, people, it says on the pa package, makes it easy to pick up doo-doo. I've never heard Yes, there are, you look it up. There are dog foods do, that are for that purpose. And Who you, also has no idea what he's talking that, about. That'd be <laughs> like saying, oh, I, I feed my kid this kibble so that when he poops in his diaper, it's really easy to clean up. I don't care about the nutrition in it, the minerals, my vitamins. I don't care about that. I just want his poop to be easy to clean up. Do I really love my kid? I don't know. So pet lovers, if you really love your pet, feed them a real dog or cat diet and make sure they get their salt and minerals. It's our, important. Our animals all eat meat except for, and, and they eat raw except for Toto. Yeah. And that is because Toto is a rescue dog and whatever he was fed beforehand has completely messed up his digestive system. He will puke it up. The like the only thing he can eat is cooked chicken. Yeah. Like that's and he can eat cooked meat fine, but raw meat he he's gonna throw up every yeah, time. But he can't eat raw meat. And he doesn't, he won't. He won't. Go ahead. Yeah, here's the thing, Karen. Karen says, Can cats eat grain free kibble? Well, Karen, flip the bag over and read the actual ingredients. If you love your cat, it's going to say pea protein, which is also not cat food. Cats are carnivores. Cats should eat only meat, only eggs, only fish, not milk. Milk is not good for cats. Most cats are lactose intolerant. They like it. It tastes good and they'll lick it up and then they'll have gut problems. Feed your cats meat and eggs and fish. That's what they're supposed to eat. So just because it says grain-free, that's like the mayonnaise that says, now made with avocado oil. And you flip it over. And canola oil. It's made of canola oil. And it's got three drops of avocado oil in it. Yeah. So just because it says grain-free, they just put some other shit in there. If they put real cat food in there, it would cost $45 a bag. Got to read the ingredients, even it, on your pet and food. And it does. There is some that you can buy. 100%. That is That's very, all meat. It's it's, a, it's raw meat, and it's yep. good. It's Instinct is the best brand, I think, but it is literally $50. Yeah, Kim. Bag. Kim, what do cats in the wild eat? The cats in your house, are they have exactly the same genetics as the cats in the wild. What do the cats in the wild eat? Did you <laughs> answer this already? Your dog, no matter how big or how small, is a wolf. This is science. They are literally wolves. What do wolves in the wild eat? They don't eat pea protein and potatoes and carrots and peas. Did you answer no. this already? No, let me say. Know. Amy, pospisil, pospisil. My 12-year-old my twelve year old was pres prescribed Prolisec 20 milligrams today. He's puking the last few months, five, six times a day. Uh easy to puke, pukes very quickly before eating and more often after eating lactose or acid in your opinion, a hundred percent. I would get rid of all grains. I would get rid of all vegetable seed oils. I'd get rid of all liquid dairy. And my 12 year old boy would be eating meat and eggs, maybe some nuts and berries. Maybe not. I might start just meat and eggs for a week or two until we get his stomach calmed down. Uh, also, how's the stress level in your house, Amy? Don't I, I know it's a touchy subject, but if there's tons of stress at school or tons of stress at home, even if it's not directed at your child, if there's stress in their environment, I feel like kids are all stressed out right now. Oh, 100 percent, yeah. But if there's arguments in the house or at work or whatever, your kid's going to pick up on all that. And the way a lot of kids show that is with uh, gastric reflux or with easy throwing up. That's one of the ways that they'll express that. Frank, ACV or lemon water daily? <laughs> if you want to, but it's not magical. Yeah, it's not nothing magical about apple cider vinegar. 
But if you like the taste of it, you can have a little bit every day. Sherry, welcome back. My friend asked me if Triple B E can ease off her daily pain meds and anxiety meds. She's been on them for 25 years. What pills should she go off first? Sherry, I'd have to know exactly which pill she's on in order to answer that question. But 100%, if she goes on a carnivore diet, her anxiety is going to get better. All her chronic medical things and mental things are going to get better. And she's going to at least be able to wean down on the dosage take a lower dosage, if not stop them all together eventually. Now, some of those meds have to be weaned very slowly. Others can be stopped uh, pretty quickly. So she needs to follow up with her doctor or she can uh, uh, sign up and uh, to patreon.com and she can ask me these questions directly. Thank you, Mooch. Mooch, thanks for the super chat. Moogie, Mooch, Mooch. Tommy, hey. Thanks, thanks Tommy. Super chat. Uh, oof, I just saw it. Right I already... Oh, you got one? Yeah, well, okay. it's going really fast. You got something? Um, uh, Tracy wants to know, chicken versus beef and thoughts on fruits other than berries. So beef every time. Beef's going to always be better for you than chicken. Chicken's okay. Uh, and, and chicken's fine for some people, but the, mo the majority of people are going to do better with beef. And then uh, fruits... You know, the plant intended for the fruit to be eaten. I agree with Dr. Saladino in that respect. And so if, you, if you're if you keto, for instance, and you wanted to spend your 20 carbs a day on fruit, I think that's totally fine. But the carbs in fruit 100% count. And if you fatten easily, if you become hyperinsulinemic easy, if you eat too many fruits, I don't care how natural they are, they're going to make you have a hyperinsulinemic. What kind of sugars and fruits? Fructose and, and sucrose. And is fructose like super bad for a part of your body? Yeah, so suc uh, sucrose breaks down into fructose and glucose. Glucose is metabolized this way. Fructose has to be metabolized a completely different way in your liver. And uh, many experts consider it fructose, especially in high amounts, to be almost as bad for your liver as alcohol. It's a big deal. So I don't think eating a little bit of fruit, if you want to count the carbs and eat the fruit, that's probably fine. But the one thing I want everybody, all 2,721 of you guys, never drink fruit juice. Never make, make a fruit smoothie. Never drink a fruit smoothie. That has a toxic amount of fructose in it. That will give you at least temporary fatty liver. It's going to store some fat in your liver. It's going to inflame your liver. Please, all, everybody promise me in the comments that you will never drink fruit juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, apple juice, or a fruit smoothie ever again for the rest of your life. And you will prohibit your children from drinking fruit juice. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics says that children should strictly limit their fruit juice intake. It's in their recommendations. If you don't believe me, go to their website and look it up. It is a big deal if you drink too much fruit juice. It's just as bad as alcohol. Also, uh, avocado is technically a fruit. Yep, so is olive. Olives, yep. those type of fruits. So there are like fruits, and yep. then there are like Yeah, if you fruits. want to eat fruits, eat olives you and know, avocado. So like do your research on the carbs and the effect uh, on your blood sugar and all do self experimentation. Like, do you really want to do that? Uh, and what metabolic disorders do you have? And how does it react to eating a fruit? And this specific like apples and bananas versus avocados and olives and that type of thing. Like you have to know thy body, know, know, thy, that, know thy body, you know, uh, because there are some people who can eat fruit and they're fine. And there are some people who can eat fruit and they are not fine. So, be honest with yourself. Just because you want it doesn't mean that your body needs it. Or that it's good for you. Or that it's good 100%. Alberto asked a great question. He says, keto for an ectomorph or are carbs okay? So Alberto is skinny. I am also an ectomorph. <laughs> he's very he's very lean. He's very slender. There are a lot of people out there who are thin on the outside and fat on the inside. The only way Alberto will know for sure is if he gets his fasting insulin and see peptide check. And as they would see, he could be pre-diabetic and not even know it. He could be hyperinsulinemic and still be skinny. Not everybody gets fat, okay? Look at every Asian and people on the Indian subcontinent. These people are all slender, but they have very high rates of pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes and hyperinsulinemia. Almost every adult is hyperinsulinemic, but they're still skinny. You cannot go by, oh, I'm skinny, therefore I can eat some carbs. You got to get the labs checked. You got to know what your metabolism says. 
Good question. What you got, woman? Hmm. I think. Let's see. What if? Okay. Here's Deandra. Deandra G. How can I find a primary physician that supports carnivore? Is there a website or a way to find a primary physician that supports mm. this lifestyle? Good question. Yes, I have a video called How to Find a Low-Carb Doctor Near You. And in the show notes of that video, I've got five or six websites. You can put your zip code in, Deandra, and it will tell you the nearest low-carb provider. And any doctor who understands low-carb is going to understand keto. They're also going to understand carnivore. They may not agree with it, but they're going to understand the, the logic and the reasoning behind it. So watch my video and put your zip code in. And this is even in other countries. You can put your zip code in and it will tell you if there's a low-carb doctor near you. I will also say... Another way is to find a local or local-ish carnivore group, keto group on Facebook. Yep. Look, I don't love Facebook. I know Facebook's blah, blah, blah whatever. We're not going to get into that. But if you can find a local, like, in your area within 50 miles or whatever, like the biggest city close to you, type in Chicago Ketovore Group. Chicago Carnivore Group. In that group, I guarantee you, somebody's going to know a physician, a provider who supports this way of eating, and it's not going to give you a lot of crap. 100%. That. That's a great strategy. Mrs. Mac 10 says, what about carrot juice? Mrs. Mac 10, how many how many grams of carbs are in a uh, eight-ounce serving of carrot juice? We were a not lot. meant to eat fruits and vegetables in that way. No, you're not supposed to drink the juice out of these things. You're going to be getting way too much fructose by drinking carrot juice. And if you look up... How, what's the nutrition in a big glass of carrot juice versus two ounces of beef liver? You're going to be like, holy crap. The, and then put that up next to a Coke and see how much sugar. Yeah, the carrot juice is <laughs> just as much. <laughs> Terry, Terry said Dr. Berry's hot. Dr. Berry is hot. Dr. Berry, hot or not? What do you guys think in the comments? No, oh, I'm going to do a poll. It. Don't do it. Hot or not. Celery juice, Frank, is less carby, but but basically celery juice is literally the absence of nutrition. Oh my god. There's literally nothing in it. I guarantee useful. you, if you have a teenage girl, they're probably drinking celery juice because that's all these little health girls on yep. TikTok are yep. doing with their I start every day with a glass of celery juice. Like and you love it, don't you? It tastes so good. Like, <laughs> Patrick says, Dr. <laughs> Barry is taken. A <laughs> oh, let's see. What we got Not as hot as his wife. <laughs> Laugh with, LOL, <laughs> another survey, Lady Smith says. Uh, Daphne, I have collagenous uh, colitis, and I'm in the middle of a bad flare-up that I can't get a handle on. I know carnivore and IF would both be a huge help. What should I focus on first, diet or fasting? Daphne, I would make a huge pot of bone broth. I'm talking about a gallon or more. And for the next 24 to 48 hours, I would do nothing but sip on salty bone broth that you made it yourself at home. And then at the end of that 48, 72 hours, when you got truly hungry, I would start to add in little bits of egg yolk and little bits of chicken liver. If you like chicken liver, if not cod liver, if you don't like that, then just a little bit of ground beef and just start in eating a little bit of meat, a little bit of egg yolk, and some chicken liver or cod liver, and slowly start eating more and more meat. I, you're going to be amazed, Daphne, at how quickly your colitis just calms down with the bone broth. It's just going to go away. All right, guys. We have went over tonight. We've been doing that recently. Stacy says you're hotter than I am. Aww. Please make sure to come subscribe to my channel for more information on ketovore and Recipes. kids and pregnancy and breastfeeding and this way of eating. Yes. And, and just fun. And there. plus she's hot. Yeah, you can fun. just watch her videos. Look at her. <laughs> We're a little more laid back on my channel. On I do lives weekly on Saturday morning. We kick back. We talk about Outlander and beef. You know, we talk about all the things. So That's if you're right. into that, Nisha loves it. Come hang out with me and follow me on Instagram as well. And yeah. If you have specific questions that you didn't get answered tonight, become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes. It's a super quick sign up and you can ask me your medication questions, your nutrition questions, your medical condition questions. Not medical it's advice. not medical advice, but I'll give you my opinion and it's then you can decide like what to do with we it. We talk to you just like Yep. This. There's three extra live Q and A's inside of the protected private Patreon community each and every week. Uh, we're going to do one tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central. So you can sign up now and you can be part of that private Q&A live 
tomorrow evening. My channel is at Nisha Loves It. If you just go to Google and type in Nisha, Nisha Loves It, YouTube, it'll pop up. Yep. Nisha Berry. How old is YouTube. Nisha Berry? Nisha Berry is fixing to have a birthday. <laughs> Am I going to have a birthday? You, you got a birthday coming up. Mm -hmm. Pomegranate juice. How many carbs are in oh, pomegranate? I used to love pomegranate. I love it. I, I love mean, I palm. Still do. Love it. <laughs> but if I drank that every day, I would be fat as a mud hog. <laughs> Dr. Perry, you need OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. This, no. <laughs> I'm going to set, set that up right now. All right. Thank, I'm 26. Yes. Yes, 26, yes, and I'm I 39. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. We love you and we mean it. Thank you. See Bye. you later.